Hey, what's up guys? It's the Catalyst 47 here, back with another video. Well, for this video guys, it's been a long time coming. The long-awaited Burning Abyss deck profile. I know I've been using this deck in some of my beginner tutorials. I wanted to... I wanted to basically... I didn't have all the cards ready before, but... I basically have all the ones... All the cards now, except for one card in the extra deck, but... I've just substituted... Actually, no, technically I'm missing four cards, but... I've substituted them in for like more budget options because the cards I'm missing are all kind of expensive and I thought this would be a good idea to like show y'all what <clears throat> what I'm replacing those cards with like these much cheaper options but yeah guys let's um well I, I guess before I start I will I will have to I'm probably gonna delay a little bit on the fifth uh the art and the last beginner Yu-Gi-Oh tutorial just because I feel like in this one I want to make show sure, I want to make sure that I know my information <laughs> and I'm not just giving y'all like um, false information. So it's gonna take a little bit more time to like you know just kind of research and make sure that what I'm saying is correct. But yeah, so I'm probably gonna delay that video till next week. But yeah, guys. So without further ado. Let's get started on this Burning Abyss, uh, Burning Abyss deck profile. This is going to be like the more control version, which I, in my opinion is probably the best one. I don't know, it just seems like it can compete with the meta. So the first card, we got Triple Farfa. Basically, the I would say it's honestly the best interu interruption in the, in the deck out of the Burning Abyss monsters. And oh, just a quick uh, overview, all the Burning Abyss monsters have basically three effects. The fr all of them have the effect that if you control another monster that's not a Burning Abyss, they automatically destroy themselves, which, which seems like it's kind of bad, which it can be sometimes, but, but for the most part, um, it doesn't really get in the way as long as you know how to play the deck correctly. And the second effect will always be that they all all the Burning Abyss monsters have the effect that um, whenever you control and spell a trap cards, you can special summon them from your hand. Um, and then the la well, okay, this that effect that I just told you guys, and then this next effect, these two effects you can only use one of them per turn. The effect of being destroyed whenever you control an, a card that's not a Burning Abyss, a monster that's not a Burning Abyss. All of them have that effect, and that effect will always um, be happening. But these other two effects, you can only use once per turn. The first one being, if you control no spoiler traps, you can special summon them from your hand. And the second one being, if they're sent to the graveyard, then they, they get their own unique effect depending on which Burning Abyss monster got sent to the graveyard. But like I said, you can only use one of those two effects once per turn, so if you use a special summoning effect, you cannot use the graveyard effect. So, yeah, and if you use the, the graveyard effect, you can't special summon them from your hand. But yeah, Farfa basically banishes one face of monster on the field when he's sent to the graveyard uh, until the end phase. Really good interruption. Uh, I run him at three just because he helps you out a lot in the grind game. Um, being able to banish one of your opponent's monsters for the turn is actually really good sometimes. Uh, even though it's not permanent, it's only until the end phase, it's still really good to stop them from making plays. And we got Triple Skarm. Uh, Skarm basically is just the search of the deck when he sent to the. Uh, like I said, they have the first two effects are technically the same for all Burning Abyss monsters. If you control another monster that's not a Burning Abyss, they get destroyed. And if you control a Spell of Traps, they get. You can special summon them from your hand. And Skarm, the graveyard effect when he sent to the graveyard, uh, at, on the end phase, you can search for another Burning Abyss that is not Skarm. So. Actually, no, not a Burning Abyss. Sorry, you can search another, uh, it's a level 3 fiend type monster, you can add it to your hand on the end phase. So it's, uh, I feel like running 3 is just really good. Uh, again, you want to try and see him as much as possible so you can search out, um, especially something like Tour Guide or whatever Burning Abyss you really need. And then the 1-ups, well, the two main ones, we got Graph and Seer. Uh, Graph, when he's sent to the graveyard, you can special summon a Burning Abyss from your deck. And Seer, when he's sent to the graveyard, he lets you special summon a Burning Abyss from the graveyard. That's not himself. So, yeah, I mean, these are 
at one for a reason that are honestly really good i'm hoping that in the next few ban lists they will at least bring them back up to two Th this deck is definitely more of a mm, how should i put it it's definitely more of a a fun slightly competitive deck it, it can compete with the top decks honestly but more often than not you're most likely gonna lose if you can't pilot this deck like almost perfectly uh, so basically, like I said, these are at 1, and this is honestly the only reason why this deck is where it's at, because it's been hit on the ban list, so. But it, I'm, I'm hopeful that they will bring the cards back up to at least 2, which I think will help the deck a lot. Okay, and then the other 1-ups that we play in the deck, so I'm just going to put all of them here. So we got 1, Cal Cab. When you send to the graveyard, you can target one spell or trap on the field, a uh, set one, and then return it to the hand. I believe it's a set one. Mm, yeah, a set one. And then Libic lets you, when you send to the graveyard, you can special summon one Burning Abyss from your hand, but and its effects are negated. Uh, Barbar basically lets you uh, do burn damage when you send to the graveyard. You can banish up to three Burning Abyss monsters. Uh, well, not including himself, but up to three Burning Abyss monsters, and then you, uh, they do, for each one, you, your opponent loses 300 life points, so they can lose up to 900 life points with his effect. Alec lets you negate a monster's effect on the field when he sent to the graveyard. And then Rubik is, it's basically just here because it's a tuner. He doesn't have a graveyard effect. He's the only one that doesn't have a graveyard effect. Um, but he is a tuner, which will help out a lot with uh, Chris Chan healthy five racks. So that's it for the Burning Abyss monsters. Then we got the support for the Burning Abyss. We got Double Tour Guy. I mean, she's at two. Um, I, I think she'll uh, get brought up to three eventually in the next, like in the next few ban lists. Honestly, I mean, Burning Abyss isn't doing anything in like com the competitive scene, so I don't see why they can't bring this card back to three. I mean, she's the main starter of the deck. I just she can she's able to do so many plays and set up good combos. Then we got the other support. We got Triple Fiendish Rhino Warrior. So this is um, basically like the, the second, I guess, technically best. Nah, not even starter. He's just more of a... Honestly, he functions both a little bit as a starter and extender. Uh, when he sends to the graveyard, uh, you get to send one Fiend-type monster from your... Uh, I think it's level 3 or lower. I don't know, it's just one Fiend monster from your deck to the graveyard. It's pretty good. Uh, you run three because uh, he, he's just you want to you want to see him as much as you can as well. Uh, he's just really good to to detach with Dante and then get the effect. Like Dante gets his own own effect to mill cards and gain attack, and he lets you send one fiend type to the graveyard. So pretty good card, and also he stops your burning abyss from destroying themselves. When he's on the field, fiend type monsters can't be destroyed by card effects. So your Burning Abyss monsters won't die if they're because he's not a Burning Abyss. So if you summon a Burning Abyss, technically they should die, but his effect keeps them from getting destroyed. So that's why he's really good in the deck. Now we got the one Absolute King Backjack. We are playing the control deck, so we do have a lot of traps, and Backjack is just really good, honestly, in that sense, with the control version. Whenever you send to the graveyard, you can uh, look at the top three cards of your deck and order them in any way you like. And then in your opponent's turn, you can banish him quick effect to mill the top card, and if it's a trap, you can set it and activate it that turn. Really good card, honestly. Uh, I think he's... Honestly, one is probably fine. I I've thought about putting him to two, but I'm not sure. Three is definitely no. Like, I think three is too much. You'll probably clog up your hand, and you don't ever want to see multiples of this guy in your hand. Honestly, I don't even ever really want to see him in my hand, which is why I'm kind of hesitant to put him at two. But at one, I've been feeling like he, it's really good. Um, and I never feel like, oh man, I really wish I had another one. Most of the time, that hardly ever happens. So I think at one, it's fine. So that's it for like the Burning Abyss and their support. Now we're going to go into the hand traps. We got Triple Ash Blossom. Uh, it's just the most generic hand trap. And it can cover or basically negate a lot of a wide variety of effects. So I don't think there's much else to be said. You want to see it as much as possible, which is why I run three. And then we got triple effect failure. 
basically the other hand trap in the deck. Uh, it's not as versatile as Ash Blossom because this one only negates monster effects. But the fact that you it's not once per turn and it's a light monster is actually really good for this deck. It's really good because of this card coming up. My one tech card in the deck, I guess, and it's just a personal favorite card of mine. Black Luster Soldier on with the beginning. I know he's not as good as he used to be, but I still think he's a very solid card to run. And at one in this deck, I think it's fine. I mean, whenever I get to summon him, it mostly always works out pretty well. His effect to banish on the field or on the field is still pretty good. And, or you can attack twice with him, basically. If he destroys a monster, you can attack a second time. And this is why having the effect builders is good. Um, you can you have several lights in the deck. You have the effect builders, and then from the extra deck, Dante and Beatrice are lights. So he's not that hard to bring out. Normally, when you have him in your hand, he's pretty live. The one spell card in the deck, Foolish Burial. I mean, basically a card that says, "What what burning abyss monster do you need?" <laughs> now, now we get into the traps. We got Triple Fiend Griefing. This card is honestly. Pretty good in today's meta. A lot of decks right now rely on getting cards in the graveyard. So this card lets you basically take them out of the graveyard on your take them out of your opponent's graveyard and lets you send a fiend type from your deck to the graveyard. So honestly, really good card. Running at running at three mostly because I'm running trap trick. So I think it's a really good card. Um, and at three, I feel like it's. I'm not saying it's mandatory, but I feel like two definitely for sure is at least mandatory, but. 3? Eh. I, I like 3. It's, it's a good card to see. Then we got Triple Paleozoic Dynamiscus. Um, I mean this card is just overall pretty solid. It lets you banish a card. The discarding part is not cost, so if they negate it, you don't even have to discard. I mean it can be a good or bad thing. Sometimes you might want to, but it, it's good to have like the fact that you don't have to discard. So and then when he's in the when it's in the graveyard, if you activate another trap card, you can bring him back as a monster so it's good for link climbing so i, I think running it at three is just good uh, you want to see it as much as possible and because just because it lets you get rid of a monster on the board and you get like a burning abyss effect if you have it so now this is the one of the cards that i'm running right now that's a replacement i'm running triple lost wind this is my budget option for infinite impermanence uh just i i I don't want to spend the money on the card right now. I'm just, I'm just praying that it gets reprinted or something in the in the near future. But Lost Wind, I think, is a very solid replacement. I mean, the only thing that sucks about Lost Wind is that you can't activate it from your hand. Compared to it, that's the only one thing that makes it permanent. It's just better. But Lost Wind is honestly really good as well. Being able to negate a special summon monster's effect, which, let's be honest, most monsters nowadays that you want to negate are special summon monsters. Um, so it, it's live almost all the time and then it halves their attack permanently too And then when it's in the graveyard if your opponent special summons a monster from the extra deck You can bra basically bring this card back from the graveyard and set it again, but it gets banished um, when it leaves the field So honestly The fact that you can basically use it twice. I, I think this is a really solid replacement for permanence, but like I said, I'm hoping it gets reprinted soon and yeah, uh, and now we're going to go into the two ups. We got two Karma Cut. Uh, I mean, this card is really good as well. It's basically like Dynamiscus, but just a, in my opinion, just a slightly weaker version of it. This one, I mean, it has its uses. Again, certain decks, it can't be it's even better than Dynamiscus, to be honest, but it's not, um, like against other decks, it might not be as good. So this one does have the cost to discard. So you, if you activate it, you're basically going to have to discard. But, I mean, like I said, it could be a good thing. And also, like, like Dynamiscus, it banishes one monster on the field. Um, well, actually, Dynamiscus is any card. It can be a, a spell or trap or a monster. But this one's only monsters. But most of the time, you're only going to banish monsters. Most of the time. Uh, and then if you, your opponent also has to banish any copies of that same monster in the graveyard. Which is honestly really good, like against Elfish or Salamangri. So... Uh, I just run two just because there's not enough space on the deck to be honest with you. Uh, and I just feel like Dynamiscus is a little bit better. So um, I run at two just for the the next card, the last card of the deck. We got Double Trap Trick. So 
This card basically lets you search any of your trap cards that you have. Well, you banish one copy of it, and then you get to set the that same trap card you banished, but another copy, of course. You get to set that trap card, and it's live that turn. So, I think, for me, trap trick, the reason I run it at two is because I... I don't ever want to see multiple trap tricks in my hand. Uh, just because with trap trick, when you activate it and then you set that the trap card that you searched, um, you can only activate one trap card after you've activated trap trick. So basically that means if you have multiple trap cards still that are set, you know, only one of them is going to be able to get activated after trap trick, which honestly that, that is a little bit, like it has come up where I'm like, I don't want to... Like, I want to be able to activate all my trap cards. I want to have them all be ready, so... I feel like, um... It's not a card you want to see multiples of in your hand just because of that part. The, the effect that you can only activate one trap card after you've activated trap trick. And, yeah, that's basically it for the deck, guys. It's a 40 cards. Um... I think it's a pretty solid deck. A really fun deck, honestly. And then, now let's get into the extra deck. We got... The one Beatrice, I mean, she's at one. She's another card that I'm hoping will get um, taken off or the limited list in the upcoming ban list. If, if we can get Seer, Graph, and Beatrice to two, I'm, I, don't, I don't even think that alone will be enough to make the deck like competitive. But I do think it'll be enough for the deck to become a solid rogue deck. So, yeah, I, I think... With those cards at two, I don't, I don't think they'll break the meta or anything. So I think I, I'm praying that they bring Beatrice, Seer, and Graf to two. Then we got double Dante. I don't feel like you need three. Uh, at least all the duels that I've had so far, I've never felt like, oh man, I really wish I had a third one. Two has been honestly enough. He's the main monster of the deck, like the main, the main boss monster of the deck. So. Getting him on the field and looping him with Seer is honestly, like, one of the ways this deck gains a lot of advantage, to be honest. So, yeah. And then we got the one Levier. So, this is basically just here in case you're... Because Seer is at one, which, that means if it gets banished, then it does kind of limit your deck a lot. So, being able to bring it back with Levier is actually really good. And that's it for the XYZs. Now we're going to the Link Monsters. So basically for... This this is the other replacement in the deck right now. We got one Zero Boros. Uh, I mean, this card is good. And it has a, a good interaction with this deck. That's... That... That honestly can be really good against certain type of decks. But the fact that it lets you banish everything on the field. That's... Um, that's really good. Banishing is honestly really good. But this is, this is supposed to be an Axe Code Talker. Um, I just don't have one at the moment. It is a pretty expensive card as well. And I, that card I don't think is going to get reprinted anytime soon. Because it just came out like 2-3 months ago. So for now I'm using Zero Boros. But I probably will get an Axe Code Talker in the near future. Then we got the, the Link 3s. We got Trisvania. Um, she, she's like a weaker version of Zero Boros. Um, so, and it's good against, like, Eldritch, the fact that it banishes, like, all the, the spell and trap cards. So, pretty good card. And then we got the one Selene. It's, like I told you guys, I do run Christian Hockey Fibrax in this deck, so, um, you, you basically have the option to go into the, the Link 4, which is the, would normally be the Axis Code Talker. But, in this case, it be Zero Boros, and she makes that play possible. So she's basically just there for like lane climbing. Then we got the one Nightmare Unicorn. And being able to bounce your opponent's cards, that's pretty good. And it could potentially get you a draw if it's co-linked. I think it's a solid card. I, I mostly go into this card with IP Mascarina, so. We got the one Nightmare Phoenix. Again, it's just, this one's good for popping back row. Um, yeah, mostly just for popping back row, I mean. I could also potentially get you a draw if it's colon. Then we got the one IP Mascarena. Um, I think she is really good in this deck. She's able to, you can go into her like with uh, on your first turn with a tour guide or something. You can end on her and uh, Beatrice. 
And basically on your opponent's turn, you can use Harass as disruption. So you can link on your opponent's turn with Harass material, go into like Unicorn or Phoenix, and then just interrupt your opponent like by popping a spell or trap or bouncing a monster. And then we got the Nightmare Cerberus. I run the three Nightmares. So Cerberus basically just lets you get rid of uh, monsters. So. Then we got the one Christian Hockey Fibrax. Uh, basically to go into, basically just a standard combo. Um, you go Halky Fibrax, bring out Effect Veiler, link them into Selene. Selene gets you back Effect Veiler, and then you can just go into an easy uh, Link 4. Then we got the one Cherubini. Um, it's just basically a, a decent card in this deck, being able to uh, being able to basically send, like it helps you send your Burning Abyss monsters to the graveyard to get certain effects and all that. And it keeps your Burning Abyss monsters from destroying themselves. Like if, if you summon a Burning Abyss on to a zone this card points to, it lets uh, they can't be destroyed. So it, it it keeps your Burning Abyss alive if you have another monster that's not a Burning Abyss. And then we got the one Gravity Controller. Honestly, I mean I haven't really been able to use this card, but I've seen instances where this card has been used online, and it's really good, honestly. Being able to out certain big monsters, and I just think it's a, a must in the deck, just in case for certain situations. And the last card, we got Dante, Pilgrim with the Burning Abyss. Uh, I mean, he can be summoned through Beatrice, and honestly, this card is honestly really good. Uh, I really like when I'm able to summon him. He's he can be targeted, he's a 2800 beat stick, and he lets you draw like every turn. So, yeah, really good card. But yeah guys, that's, that's gonna be it for the, that's basically the whole deck. I mean, the Burning Abyss and the extra deck. I hope you guys enjoyed this deck profile. Uh, the deck is, like I told you guys, the deck is really fun. I've been, I've been testing it quite a bit against uh, my friend, and it's, it's worked out pretty decently. I haven't tested too much out, like, I do have a side deck in mind, but I haven't really been able to test it out with a side deck, uh, but eventually I will, like, try to perfect that. I mean, we can't really even go to locals right now, so it's kind of hard to build a side deck when you don't know, like, what people at your events that you're going to are really running, so, yeah, no, no side deck for now, but, yeah, I mean... With how I've been using it so far, with just the main deck and that's the extra deck, it's it's worked out pretty well. I think that the deck is pretty strong. Uh, I, I know it's not like top tier, but it, it's still a pretty fun, slightly competitive deck that you honestly I have you can't beat the meta decks with this deck. It's just a lot harder than with another deck that's meta. Like meta decks are just technically a little bit easier to use because they're already strong. But with these type of decks that are that are okay strength, like they're they're solid, but they're not top tier. You just have to be definitely smarter, and you have to be choose your plays more correctly. And you can't you can't mess up, or else the meta decks will just uh, basically <laughs> roll you over. But yeah, guys, that's gonna be it for the deck profile. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please leave a like and subscribe if you did. And yeah, we'll see y'all for the next video. Peace out. Thank <laughs> you.